everybody, welcome back to Sarah's Table. Pew, 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 pew. Finger guns. Hi. Hi. I'm all by myself today. Um, my name is Sarah Moore. My pronouns are she, her, and I am going to be your host today and your favorite person. I'm going to remind you to drink some water so you are probably dehydrated. Weather has been weird lately, man. Let's catch up. Hi. Um, I was gone last week. Last week was a pre-recorded, a, a replay of an episode that I did last year, um, which I thought was really great, especially because it is Pride Month. And so I wanted to make sure that we were highlighting um, games that uh, told queer stories. Um, and I spent the week at... Disney World, which was amazing. Um, I know there's a lot of polarizing things happening about uh, Disney. People don't love Disney. I personally am a Disney person. Um, being at Disney during Pride Month is pretty dope. They had some really great... Got I got some, some Disney Pride merch, um, like officially licensed, all that all that queer stuff. Um, I came back, I feel really inspired. I feel really recharged. I'm really um, jazzed to like get back into stuff. And when I was trying to figure out what I was going to be playing this week, I thought, you know, I, I really feel like I would like to just sort of um, play another game that highlights queer stories and started looking around and um none of them felt like the correct one for me to be doing and so because i don't have enough going on um i thought what if i you know start making my own and um my partner jeff and i sat down and we started talking about you know what is it that i'm looking for out of this game and so we landed on um, the working title being Elder Queers, because I thought one of the things that I would like to do is highlight the fact that the generations of queer people who have come before us have done so much for the movement. And I know that we are not in a position right now where everyone who is queer feels safe. Um, and I know that in all parts of the world, this is not a thing that you can be openly, but I know that we have made great strides in a lot of places, the US being one of them. Although like, I don't, <laughs> can't super get into the political aspects of it at this moment, but like, um. In general, it is safer today to be a queer person than it was in the past in history. Um, and I think that as a queer person, I owe a lot of of things to, to those people who have come before me. Um, and I think that we can learn from them and their uh, struggle and their wisdom and... Um, and so I wanted to sort of focus on that you are calling on your ancestors, but like your ancestors don't necessarily have to be in blood, right? Like all of those queer people that came before have stories that they can tell us that can help us like become help us solve problems and overcome obstacles and learn about ourselves. And so that is sort of what we landed on. That's it. That's where we're going. And so, uh, it, it, you know, it's been, it's been a wild week. We have been trying to get caught up from being out of town and all of this stuff. And um, so I thought, instead of put up a game that is not ready yet, I thought maybe you guys could hang out with me for a little while while I do some 
work on it. Um, and we can talk a little bit about, you can see my uh, process of uh, craziness that I <laughs> do when I am trying to design a game and, and build out a campaign or whatever. Um, and also we could, we could just kind of like, we'll just have a little uh, discussion about it. So I'm going to keep drinking water. So um, once again, happy Pride Month. I um, am I'm, I'm super jazzed to get into this. Um, Jeff did a pass on it. Uh, we are looking at maybe basing it sort of on the mechanics of lasers and feelings, which I am going to pull up separately just so that I can kind of look at beep 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 um so you you have you have two things and um the suggestion was made that it was maybe sweet and sour but i'm still kind of playing with that i'm not really sure where i want it to be yet so um it's kind of working and then we have a couple of tables we have tables that we need to build for a problem we have tables that we need to build for the elders, which we sort of started for, and then the possibility of a table for complications. I think that a one-page RPG is so helpful when there's all these tables written out because it, it really allows you to not have to do a ton of prep. And so as I am approaching this project, I'm trying to look at it in a way of like, like as a DM, what would I want at my fingertips? And I don't want this game to be like a bummer, right? Like I I think that that is a valid story to tell um, about queer struggles and all of that stuff. But like, I really want this game to be joyful and hopeful. I feel like that's much more my brand. Um, and so I don't necessarily want the complications and the problems that this person is having to be like, I don't want it to be, if I come out, I am in danger. I don't want it to be, I don't know how to tell my best friend that I am queer. I want this, um, to, to just be like like normal stuff but with a clear like a queer spin on it right like I'm gonna solve my problems through the queer lens because that is how I see the world and I think that that is um sort of a small distinction but an important one um I I need it to be hopeful and not tragic if that makes sense i'm not sure if you can hear the train barreling by as i said that but like it's I'm gonna wait a moment because it's just it's just screeching in the background hopefully it's noise gated out who knows um i also feel like i know it's a little cliche but it's also very much my brand if you look around like there's rainbows everywhere just rainbows everywhere um so i feel like maybe i want to look at the complication table to be or maybe even the prep okay all right i don't know if this is gonna work but i think maybe your problem table maybe you you play through the rainbow so like this game will end up being seven turns because we are working on table for problems. Beep, 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 beep. Oh no. You guys are gonna see how bad I am at technology and like 
Jeff built this to be pretty and I don't know how to make it be a pretty table. So <laughs> that's gonna be a thing. Sorry, Jeff. Are you gonna open this up later and be like, what happened? Um I am not good at technology. Okay. <clears throat> so I think let's try this. Let's have our our game. Maybe I'll do it at the top in like a little description thing. Ba -ba -ba -ba. In a series of seven turns corresponding with the colors of the rainbow. Uh, I <laughs> use the wisdom and help from your queer ancestors to solve day to day problems. Yeah, I'm trying to decide like how big I want this to be, right? Like how big of a story are we telling? Is this like putting together? Let's go this way. The series of seven turns corresponding with the colors of the rainbow you used wisdom and help from your queer ancestors to... Um, Create your community's first Pride Festival. I understand like this is wildly niche and this is probably a game that you could adapt pretty easily to um, to like be in other situations. But I think like the more specific and simple i think i make it the easier i think it will be and i think this is something that like you can um <laughs> use oh no communities community apostrophe s it is not plural it is your community first pride festival all right so i think that means that we can take the problems that you are dealing with. Um, we need to come up with seven of them and the seven of them need to be um, corresponding to what you would need to do with a festival. Uh, suddenly I'm doing a lot of stuff that I do in my day job, which I feel like is just like production management. And like that is, oh, but I don't know, write what you know, right? Um, so let's do the colors of the rainbow. Roy, G, Viv. Um, I was just talking to somebody down at Disney and we were talking about using mnemonics to help you like remember things and they don't teach that in school anymore and i don't understand why wouldn't do it like i will always remember the colors of the rainbow because of where biv and like they don't teach that anymore does anybody remember that it's, let me see what, what are the other ones mary's violet eyes make john stay up nights proposing that was how i remember that's how i memorized all of the the order of the planets from closest to the sun out. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. Like that, that is a possibility, I suppose. <laughs> um, let's see, so red, orange. I promise that this stream is not just going to be you watching me um, doodle rainbows. Although. That could be okay. I could, I could doodle rainbows. Um, so what are the things that we need to accomplish in these seven turns? Um, 
anytime you are planning a party. Um, okay, so I think we need a venue. These that might get moved around. We need a venue. We need um, entertainment slash programming. Um, we need food. We need a way to get the word out for attendees, advertising, advertising, marketing. Am I like, like I said, making this game, I feel like I am, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm working on, on other parts of my life. <laughs> Let's just put this all together. It'll be great. Um, then you, Programming and entertainment, food. Although, is entertainment and programming separate? No, I don't think so. Seven things. Um, maybe being too broad. What else do you need for a... Um, beep, 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 beep. I mean, attendees, I'm going to put that as a, as a thing, because I think that is a separate thing, especially if it's like the very first time that you're doing a Pride Festival. Um, how about... Maybe fundraising, because people has got got to pay for it. And then um, seven thing for a festival. Okay, I'm going to say community engagement, like community business engagement. Because um, I feel like that's a little bit different than fundraising um i feel like fundraising is maybe uh something that that could be looked at as like we are fundraising for a charity or for something specific and i think community engagement involves like like having people come together this is all infancy and maybe this is not gonna work Thank you for coming with me on my journey. Um, cool. Okay, so. So a table for a problem. All right. Um, uh, sweet and sour, sweet and sour. I don't know that I like sweet and sour for lasers and feelings. Like I understand that they should be uh, things that are sort of considered to be opposite of each other. Um, but I don't think I want to um, put in the option of it. Like sour sort of imply implies not appealing. And I, I think... I don't know i don't know that i i like that idea i feel like lasers and feelings the two of them um are not opposites like they obviously do different things but neither one is objectively like a bad thought and so like i think i would like to let's not do sweet and sour let's do Mm, I feel like it's something that's like a like a I understand it's like a physical and then like a like a mental kind of thing or like a like a <sighs> okay okay I mean I think we lean into like the the queer like the 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 drag aspect um and like is it what you're using your like charisma with 
or is it what you're using like your physical with? And I'm, I'm working at the moment. Let's go with, um, platforms. I made a thing go away. Platforms like your platform shoes and makeup. Let's see. Let's see what happens there. Let's see how, how that is sitting with me. Um, Okay, we got some. Tone emotion, good, good. Um, okay, I feel like this is turning into a whole new thing. Uh, wisdom and help from your queer ancestors to create your community's first pride festival um this has sort of been a thing that is on my mind because tomorrow um which is june 22nd it, i live in a little teeny tiny town um a little suburb and um tomorrow it's having its very first pride festival and i'm super excited about it but also like i wonder how this is going to be in the community like the community is very um i feel like pretty religious based i mean it's friendly but it's very small town it's like the epitome of small town right like it's little um and so i'm very interested to see how that will translate into a pride festival and what that is going to look like. Um, and like my oldest and I, I think are going to go down and, and take a walk around. It's supposed to be a beautiful day. We're going to go check it out. Um, but I wonder um, like who helmed that, like who was in charge of putting it together and yeah, I'm just really interested to see how that's going to be. And so this sort of thing has been like on my brain. Um, especially coming from a place where uh, like Disney has Disney money, right? And so all of their pride stuff is like well-funded, super well-funded. And it is... Um, loud and like branded and there's a bunch there was a bunch of places for like photo ops all over all of the parks that was just like rainbows just like threw up everywhere which I personally loved um and I feel like it is harder sometimes to get that going in a small space um and like so how is that going to happen oh uh, whoa. art art is that part of the venue is that part of advertising gosh i don't know maybe community maybe that's part of the community engagement section art everything sort of becomes everything right like um my brain, my brain. Welcome everyone. Um, it's just like a bunch of piles in there. And like, I'm trying to like sort them out comfortably, but sometimes things don't want to go where they belong. Or I'm not sure where to put them is usually the option. Um, okay, cool, cool. What's going to happen? Um, table for problems. So now I'm wondering if this is, if I need a table for each of these, like for the problem. Hmm. Beep, beep, beep. 
solve the problem with. Okay, okay. Is it the same problem? Table for elders, 1d6 to roll plus 2d6 if the tone or emotion matches the problem. All right, so we've got seven turns. What does a turn look like? I'm gonna bring some dice out just so that I can sort of have a moment so I can be messing around with something. The dice that happen to be right here um, are, are very queer dice. I have my bisexual dice. And then my rainbow dice. And these are, yeah, can you see them? Of course I show the one. Um, these are silicone. And so they feel and smell, honestly, like those erasers that we had as kids um, that were really beautiful and shaped, but never actually erased anything. So, uh, and they bounce around, but they're very quiet. They're very like low impact, which is nice when you are on a stream and you don't want it clacking around. Um, okay, have the dice out, have them out. Seven turns, each turn, you are trying to solve a problem. You roll, okay, each turn, beat, beat. That is not how you spell each. Good job, Sarah. Each turn you roll. Oh, I feel like I wanna have people color things. Oh no, is this turn into a coloring thing? I just get really excited about like <laughs> being able to color stuff. I have sitting on my desk just out of camera um, a set of colored pencils that is sitting inside a unicorn head. Um just right there uh and i feel like maybe there is a rainbow on this that you color in when you have solved the problem it's a doodle you need a piece of paper gonna do it i was gonna you know Jeff was like, we can share your screen, baby. It's going to be great. And we'll share your screen and then they can see what you're doing. And I was like, yeah, because of course I'll do everything on the computer. That is not true. I will not do everything on the computer. Oops. So I think in the corner, there's going to be a rainbow. And maybe it just like takes up the very corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Work work with me Here we go. just like you know like this edge down here is just like a rainbow that you can like color in as you're doing it and like as you get closer to the middle or maybe you build up so that like when you get to here you've done it all i don't know i'm one two Three, four, five, six, seven. Just like you build from the bottom up, and then when you get to the end and you've colored it all in, you have done it. I love it. Somehow smeared it immediately. I don't know what happened. It is my process. Okay, so each turn, hold on. All right, so let me go up. B, I, B, G, Y, O, R. Okay, so it's all in there. Then you just gotta uh, color it in when it happens. Cool. Um, it's like your literal countdown. I do well with that. I also like coloring things. 
think probably other people like coloring things. All right, so each turn, you roll on the... problem table for the colors for the colors category you interact with the antagonist using platforms or makeup I like can you call on yeah you get a bonus you get a bonus if you okay. I don't like calling them antagonists I understand that that's what it is but like I want to approach this I don't want it to seem like, as a queer person, that you are dealing with either other queer people or non-queer people in, like, a really antagonistic manner. And I get that, like, I get that, like, it's just a word and, like, obviously it's your opponent or whatever because this is a, an obstacle that you were trying to overcome. Um I'm going to just say obstacle instead of antagonist, because I don't necessarily think that all of the obstacles are going to be people. I think sometimes your obstacles can be like scheduling. Um, because that's honestly the biggest antagonist in every RPG session is just trying to get a time. Um, okay, 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 okay. Interact with the obstacles using platforms or makeup. When using, calling on an elder queer, Uh, your emotion matches the emotion associated with the EQ. Get a bonus D6 to your pool. When you have solved, no, not solved, overcome your color's obstacle, you may color, physically color, physically color it in on the sheet. And then move on to the next band of the rainbow. Beep, 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 beep. Um, how do the dice work? How do the dice work? Table for elders. Roll 1d6. So this is like, so we've got a table of 12. My partner Jeff came up with 12 because you can roll potentially 2d6, but like. Okay, so. You rolling 2d6 to get on to, to get the elder. So like I would roll 2d6, beep, 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 beep. I got nine. Um, Which is Fernand Lancaster, who is a neighbor and is always uh, irritated, which feels uh, right for all of my neighbors. Um, 
And if I were to use him to use his knowledge to help solve whatever problem I am working on, if I use irritation to overcome that emotion or to overcome that obstacle, then I would get to add 2d6 instead of only 1d6. Okay, okay. Beep, 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 beep. One calling on an elder queer, add one D6 to your dice pool. Boop. If your emotion matches the emotion associated with the elder queer, you get a bonus. So you get two D6 to your dice pool. Um. I feel like there needs to be a your like a percentage of success. I think you only get one crack at each of them. And I think that you can have a very successful event without all seven being like a success. Um yeah, okay, so. Great. I think 60, I mean, D's get degrees, right? So we need to be over 50%. Up, 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 up. Okay, so four. I'm going to say uh, that there's probably a range of success. So four successful bands, four successful colors is... Um, success, but... Could, like, like level of happiness is not great. You need to have at least four to have succeeded in putting on a a successful event. And the higher, obviously, the more excited the community probably is. Um. Is there a way? to fix it like if you don't get four i feel like there should be right maybe does it cost something I feel like it would cost something um Yeah. Points. There's some sort of point system. Okay. Okay. More successful colors to win. To win. Which is put on a successful event. I think it's important to note that, like, this is a, in this imaginary world of the game, that this is um, a wanted event. Um, that perhaps if things happen at not super successfully, it is because um, you as the player are in over your head and not that it has got a bunch of pushback. Again, this is like a wanted thing hopeful hopeful joyful um okay 
do 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 do. This is just a mess to look at. Bless you all for being here and <laughs> trying to like figure this out with me. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, I have been talking pretty much nonstop for a bit. Um, I am going to pause for a moment. I'm going to go get myself a snack and then I'm going to come back here. Uh, so don't leave. Give me one second. Hold on.
Okay, I'm back. Pew, pew, pew. I did it. I'm here. I have a snack. It's gummy bears. Um, I don't know. They're just so cute. And they're like a little rainbow of joy. And that is what I feel like I'm working on. Um, I feel like it's important to talk about why pride is important. And I just want to like have that quick conversation with you. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing this stop the share okay okay let's just have a quick conversation about why pride is important first time wearing um uh, kudos to gen con because i'm wearing their um roll with pride their pride merch um it is excellent i like it it's also really comfy and you should grab some um i think that a lot of people you know, maybe don't know the history of Pride, and I am not necessarily here to give you a history lesson about it. I think that there are people far more qualified than I am to do that, and there's a lot of information out there, and I think that you should go seek it out if you are not sure. But um, the early Prides were, the first Pride was a, a riot. It was, It was a reaction to queer people being um, treated as less than people, basically, um, not being able to allow, let not being allowed to uh, love who they want and be who they want in, in a way that is safe. And um, I think that that is still happening in a lot of places. And I feel incredibly lucky that my people have accepted me for who I am, um, regardless of who I love. Um, and I try to create that space for everyone around me as well. Um, my house is a safe house. Uh, my sphere is a safe sphere. Um, I think that is one of the reasons, um, why it's something that I try to be so vocal about. I think that, seeing someone who is comfortable being their authentic self is helpful for a lot of people. Um, maybe it makes them feel a little bit less alone. If you could have queer role models who are comfortable being out, then it might make somebody else feel a little bit more comfortable being able to do that themselves. Um, I am not advocating for you to come out if you are not in a position where you are safe to do so. Um, but like we see you, I see you, and I am here supporting you. I am pulling for you. Um, so much that. I also think it's important. There are a lot of people who need that extra help and financially maybe need extra help to get themselves out of situations. So this weekend um, on Gen Con TV, tomorrow, June 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific, we are running a fundraiser for the Trevor Project. And it is going to be uh, an episode. It's a session of Thirsty Stored Lesbians, uh, which is unapologetically queer, like incredibly gay. And we are going to, um, we have a, a very modest goal of $250. And it is actually already up if you want to just start donating now. If you want to wait until the actual stream, that's great too, because um, your, your contributions during the stream can affect the story. It can buff the players. It can buff me as the DM. It can um, create uh, crazy complications. We can add in a problematic DM or, uh, sorry, that's me. I'm the problematic DM. Um, we can add in a problematic NPC. We can, um, if you are feeling very generous and you want to give 50 bucks, um, that just literally says more gay. Like that is how we're going to define it. And so me as the DM, I will literally just like, I will add in some more fun, sexy, gay delightfulness. Um, it, it With that in mind, it is definitely going to be family friendly. I do not want you to feel like you cannot have your kids here. Um, I think that queer stories are 
for all ages. So I don't want us to hide behind like, like the fact that like, well, it's got to be 21 and over, it's got to be 18 and over. Like this is, this is for everybody. This is going to be, this is a normalized thing. Um, queer people existing is not a threat to your children. And so I want, if you feel comfortable to bring your kids, just like you have always brought your kids here to Sarah's table, this is going to be just as okay. And everyone will know that uh, there, there, we're not going to be graphically d describing violence or anything sexual. Like you might see ladies kiss and that's about as far as it'll go. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's important and I think that you should come join us for it. And, um, I don't want you, I don't want anyone to feel like they are not able to be who they are here. Um, in case you did not know, with all of these rainbows and disco balls and this whole thing, like, um, I think you are important. And the world is a better place when you get to be who you are. So I know this sort of turned into like a crazy PSA, but like, I think, especially at this time of year, like maybe you need to hear it. So love who you love and be who you are. And if you have the means, you know, give financially a little bit so that other people who are not in your position can also love who they love and be who they are. Um, <laughs> also, if your parents are not supportive, um, I am your mom now. I will come and give you a hug. Uh, you let me know time and place, and I will make that happen. Um, getting all gushy. Here it is. I'm just all like emotional and joyful, and like it's just something that's important to me. So, thank you for hanging out with me today. As I made, as I made more progress on this game, which I hope will be done by the end of this month, and then you can just like <clears throat> use it and play it if you want, and. It, you know, don't if you don't, that's okay too. But like, I like coloring and I like developing and I think this is where it was at. Um, and come back tomorrow and hang out with me and like, let's make the world a better, safer place for queer people and queer stories. Um, and then if you want to come back next week, I'm going to be here again, just like every Friday night at 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, and next week I'm starting an arc of The Crown, which is a game that I co-designed with Damon Van He and um, it's a majority queer team there too. Like, see what happens with everything going on there. Um, and then like, there's gonna, then we're like rapidly coming up on Gen Con and I don't know what's gonna happen after that, but like, I am not going anywhere. I'm gonna be here um, and I'm going to be just as unapologetically me. That's my goal for 2024. Um, thank you to Gen Con for giving me this platform and for trusting me. And um, and thank you to Peter Atkinson for, you know, just letting me do basically whatever I want on the show. Um, I really appreciate uh, your trust. And thank you to my partner, Jeff, for helping me develop this game and for also being my editor and for... Um, always making me look as good as possible. <laughs> um, thank you to Marcus Mays, who is our tech over at Gen Con TV, who um, got this episode very late. And I appreciate you <laughs> for scrambling with me. Um, and, you know, thank you at home for hanging out with me and allowing me to sort of get up on my soapbox this week. Um, 
I really appreciate that you all stick with me as much as you do and that I get to do this really uh, cool game thing for a living. Um, I'm very excited about it. In case you can't tell. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go eat some gummy bears and I'm going to have more water, which you should also have more water. And um, like, I don't know what your particular uh, situation is, but just like a pro tip is that like, Every bisexual I know loves an iced coffee. And if you want to buy somebody an iced coffee, like, like maybe just like it's Pride Month, you know, like uh, go buy your favorite bisexual an iced coffee. Go, go support your local queer person. Um, it means a ton to us. That's real. Um, so please keep making art and keep being art. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.